Hey, DJ. You see, this is kind of a little bit similar to the combine uh, where he starts to get into it right as he goes yeah. along. He missed a couple throws early at the combine, then he got more comfortable. So uh, we'll see if he can get locked in a little earlier today. Yeah, I was curious about that combine performance because, you know, we talk about some of the mechanics and footwork that kind of stood out as a little bit raw that we saw on display in Indianapolis. I was curious if that's something you're really going to be watching to see if uh, kind of starting to get some of that stuff cleaned up a little bit here. Yeah, when you, you know, look, you take into account that he didn't take any snaps under center, so it was, it was understandable there's going to be a little bit of an adjustment period there. So I want to see, as a lot of personnel guys here, Buck, want to see just the difference between the footwork we saw at the Combine and where he's at today. Uh, he's been working with John Beck, the former quarterback at a BYU. Uh, I believe it was a second-round pick back yeah, in the day. Yeah, but Mike Smith's time with the Miami Dolphins. Exactly. So he's been working, and we just want to see a little bit more urgency. Uh, getting away from center today. The ball does jump out, though. You can see that. Yeah, I think the big thing, DJ, is you, you want to begin to have the imagination. Can you? Ima what kind of offense can you imagine Justin Herbert being in? What style of play does he need to have to be able to be successful in the National Football League? When you're looking at this tape, you're trying to put all those things together to kind of see how does he fit. I want to see him just let it rip, man. Don't guide the football. Get your back foot and really drive it and let it go so we can uh, – you know, we can see what you can do with that arm because it is a big arm. And also the reason play action is so big, when you think about the stretch bootleg game, some of the things that we've seen from Kyle Shanahan, Gary Kubiak, those systems put the quarterbacks on the edges. It creates half field reads. It creates big voids uh, at the second level. But more importantly, it enables you to use your athletic quarterback as a dual threat. And even though we don't vision him being a true dual threat, his athleticism and running skills should allow him to do things like that, being able to get on the move throw it on the outside, test the defense horizontally and vertically with his athleticism and with his arm talent. It's Herbert here getting a rep with his second leading receiver this year, Juwan Johnson, as we talked about right there. And guys, this is that time of year where we also talk about, you know, there's a, there's a difference with accuracy and ball placement, right? Accuracy, we judge a lot on completion percentage, but that doesn't yep. tell the whole story, right? It's your ability to give a receiver a chance to go ahead and make a play after making the catch. And But from what I've seen here, he's been pretty clean. Is that what showed up on tape for you guys mostly? Well, I think that was an area he could improve with uh, when you watch him on tape. I mean, they had a lot of drops this year, which you got to factor in when you're studying Justin Herbert, and there are some big-time throws that did not get caught. But there's also stuff, especially underneath and in an intermediate level, where you got some completions, but the placement wasn't ideal. And that's uh, honestly a, one of the biggest adjustments for these guys going from the collegiate level to the NFL level, Buck. The windows shrink, and uh, and those aren't going to be completions. So your, your placement is huge. Yeah, placement is everything in the National Football League because as a receiver, they will tell you, uh, coaches will tell you, the quarterback is going to throw you away from trouble. Trust where the ball is because that's going to take you to the promised land. So for Justin Herbert, he has to be able to consistently put the ball in the right spot on the right shoulder so he can lead lead and guide the receiver up the field. That's why we talk about and, accuracy. And, and one interesting thing here, Rhett, is while you're watching Herbert here, they're really trying to incorporate with John Beck, you see him there on a knee, some off-platform, off-schedule throws because when you're comparing him with Jordan Love, which a lot of teams are doing, you see Jordan Love's ability to get off your spot and be able to be a little bit more loose and free and make some of those off-platform throws. You don't get an opportunity to see much of that from Justin Herbert. So the theme early on in this workout, you see them trying to feature that aspect of his game. is much more comfortable executing play action stuff than your traditional dropbacks. Yeah, there's another one right there, a high ball to uh, wide receiver Juwan Johnson there on the sideline. And guys, look, this was Justin Herbert. We kind of thought we might see him last year coming out for the draft, decided to stay at Oregon. And I, how do you feel like this year helped him or, or did it at all uh, as he gets ready for the NFL here? First of all, look at how much more smooth that just looked right there, especially mm -hmm. working to the right side. Uh, but I, I do think it helped him, right? Going back to school, um, not only did he come back to get better individually, he got a chance to have some team success, which is always a, a big thing when you're in the draft room. This guy uh, helped lead a team to the Rose Bowl. He played in bigger games because of the success that they had, which was a big stage for him. And, and albeit in the in the Rose Bowl, Buck was more of his legs than his arm mm -hmm. in terms of making plays. But nonetheless, he got it done. And, and that, to me, was, was very valuable and is going to help his stock as we go into this draft. I completely agree. I believe coming back a year actually helped him because if you remember last year, 
in the bowl game against Michigan State. He only completed like 57% of his passes, and he finished the year as a sub-60% passer. We wanted to come back and see, could he improve? Could he be more efficient? And I think he did that while also displaying the athleticism, the leadership ability that you want to see from him. Completion percentage went up. 32 touchdowns, just six interceptions, second in the Pac-12 uh, in that number. And boy, you really do just see, I think we we kind of coined the turn last year with a couple of those quarterbacks that were coming out the easy gas, and he sure does have it. It just, it pops right out of his hand. We saw that at the Combine uh, as well. And look, we've been talking a little bit about uh, utilizing play action in a scheme that would work that way. How about a team fit that might employ that scheme that you might like to see Justin Herbert ultimately end up with here? little breather here as Herbert's got some limited receivers to work with as uh, he works through close to 60 throws in this workout here today. Let's a deep ball go again. That just flies right out of his hand and great ball yeah, placement. He's really well. comfortable. He, he's really comfortable on those corner routes. We saw this at the combine. Um, he gets it up nice loft on the ball. Um, you see the ball turn over, drop right in the bucket. So this is a, a throw that he's, he's very comfortable with. That's another good ball right there. You know, I think it also speaks to, you talk about play action and what offense would be ideal for Justin Herbert. You mentioned the Indianapolis Colts and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as two. And I think the common denominator between those two, vertical passing games can be a big part of both offenses. Tampa more so than Indianapolis. But Indianapolis under Frank Reich, they showed in Andrew Luck's final season, they showed that they could do more play action. They took care of the ball. There was a little more ball control, um, a little more intermediate off play action. I think he would play really, really well in an offense like that, especially with a great quarterback tutor and Frank Wright being able to kind of mentor and drop some nuggets in his ear. So, guys, if we're talking about the decision for teams that are considering turning in their card for Justin Herbert at the end of April and deciding between he and Jordan Love in that uh, kind of scenario, what then separates Herbert from the top two quarterbacks? Or wh where is that gap and what lies in that gap with, with Burrow and Tua Tonga Vailoa at the very top of this quarterback class. Well, look, for me, there's a big gap. I mean, I have the top two guys with Burrow and then Tua. I know Buck has it flipped with those top two guys, but I think there's a pretty significant drop off. But in talking to some some scouting buddies here, that's closer with some of these teams, mm -hmm. and the health of Tua's hip uh, factors into that. Where you know, I wouldn't be shocked if 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 we were to be there on draft day, Buck, and and we saw Herbert even get picked ahead of Tua, that would not shock me. No, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. Um, I, I think the reason we talk about those first two uh, being rated significantly higher than Herbert is because at their best, we've seen higher highs. I don't know if we've seen Justin Herbert put those kind of highs together on tape. You can see them kind of being creative with this, and the fact that he showed off his running the last couple of games, I think you open up the playbook a little more and you allow a little more creativity to come into the mix. This is the, uh, I call this the Sam Darnold throw here, Rhett, because yeah. this is where they got him going to the left and you're going to throw a deep ball back across the middle. You're not supposed uh, to do that, are you? You're not, but it's a show-off, though. And it's, it's a show-off, you right? You're able to, you've got some, some, some looseness to you. You can disassociate your, kind of your lower half with your upper half and be able to generate that type of velocity. So uh, I, I, like, I like that throw. I know you don't see, you're not often going to see that in a game, but it's a good opportunity to see if a guy can, can really cut it loose with his upper body. I think this workout is very much... Um, built and designed as his personality is. Like we've talked about, he's not necessarily a dynamic personality, but what he is is a very effective uh, quarterback. Here we see him standing, is this both feet are playing in the ground. This is just a show off drill, as DJ <laughs> likes to talk about. He's just throwing, he's just, flat just launching it. Flat, flat footed, footed. Yeah, there 60, there you go. Yards. 60 yards. Yeah. I mean, that, that's pretty impressive. I mean, that's pretty, yep. pretty impressive. No, so he can go, if he, if he wants to do Kyle Bowler, he can go to the 50 and throw it through the, uh, throw the goal post. Oh, but no this question. is, again, you're getting a chance just to see raw arm strength. You cannot crow hop into this thing like you're, you're in center field. You've got to be able to generate all that velocity. You're there from a flat-footed, static uh, position. And I think the last one was, what, 63, 64 yards yep. static? That's, uh, that's, that's a big arm. That is a very big arm.